Yes. <laughs> Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Joshua Cryer, and we're back with another video. This time, it's not like normal. I've never done a video like this, but I kind of just wanted to talk about the social injustice, what happened at the Capitol building, um, and a lot of things that are just going on in the world right now. Uh, I usually don't put my opinion out here like this, usually, but... Um, I just felt like there was a need for it and that I needed it for myself to just get this release out. Um, I like to say that I have a special guest on the channel today. Um, she's been in like skits and different things like that, but she's never been here just talking. So, welcome my lovely sister Jasmine. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're gonna get into it. Um, we got some serious topics to talk about today. So the first thing we'll probably end up talking about is the girl that ended up tackling the black boy in the hotel lobby trying to find her phone and trying to get her phone back. Um, that was a serious situation and uh, I tweeted this today but I basically just said that one misinterpretation of a situation could either get somebody in jail or it could get them um, killed, honestly. And I think that's a big problem in America right now. So what do you think about that whole situation? It was definitely irritating to watch. Um, I thought it was very unnecessary because out of the whole lobby of guests in that hotel, like she just chose like the black boy and his father in front of her right. to like put her hands on him or just even like really pin it on them the way that she did was just unnecessary and right. uncalled for. I think things escalated when she like actually physically grabbed him and then oh, like the dad had to protect and stuff like that. She had an interview with Gail King mm -hmm. and she was basically talking about like uh, kind of like trying to make herself the victim and saying like oh yeah the dad tackled me the dad um, did whatever like uh, as well as me doing whatever the kid even though she didn't really admit to that. Um, but uh, yeah, it was I think crazy. that's what makes the the situation like more annoying too is the fact that she takes like zero responsibility mm. for any wrongdoing in that situation. She tries to make it seem like she's the victim. Right. So yeah, it's just frustrating to say the least. But yeah. am I surprised? No. Did you see she got arrested though? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I got I got the article here so I can read it. Um, just so that um, we have some context. Uh, you know, I got you. Um, this is from abcnews.com, uh, and the uh, title of this article is Women Accused of Attacking Teen in New York Hotel Arrested After Fleeing, Boy's Family Speaks Out. Maya Ponsetto, hopefully I said that right, the woman wanted for allegedly falsely, yeah, um, that's not that important, uh, falsely accusing a teenager of stealing her smartphone and physically attacking him inside a New York City ho hotel has been arrested in California after fleeing authorities there. Ponsetto fled the Ventura County Sheriff's Department after it tried to make a traffic stop on the warrant for her arrest out of New York, officials said. The department said it had to follow her while she refused to stop driving slowly through her neighborhood in Peru, California. Once she stopped in front of a home, she put up a fight and resisted arrest, where she had to be physically restrained and arrested by deputies, authorities, ABC News. So. I mean, I kind of said that to say because I kind of read this before um, we got on this video, but like she wanted to accuse the boy of stealing the phone and yet she was the most dangerous one out of the whole situation. She tackled him and after when the authorities came after her, normal people just put their hands up, do whatever they have to do and then just go in and then fight the legal battle. But she literally like put her hands up and wanted to duke with them. Right, because girl, if it wasn't all that you're saying it was like, oh, it's not a big deal, like how, you know, she she tries to play it off then you know then you shouldn't be that defensive when the police come to get you i think the big problem is that like brown and black skin is associated with being a threat being violent and that's what's pushed out in like media when like they say like oh this criminal and then they'll show a black face like it's just creating that association with black skin to being violent or whatever else that the police need to act a certain way you know or anybody in general so of course um, I think that's a big thing that had to do with like her going after him specifically instead of anybody else who's in there. Right. Um, and that's that, that's the problem. That's the problem that we need to fix. Right. Because how are you just going to tell somebody they got your phone? Like, right. that was a phone that his dad paid for for him. Like, you don't get to just say, oh, no, that's my phone. Right. Like, girl, sit down. <laughs> Several yeah. seats. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, 
But I think that was good, though. I think we had a good conversation on that one. Um, and I think it was a good conclusion, too, because she finally got arrested. Um, and now she has to face judgment, I guess. So. Do you think it... Okay, I got a question for you. <laughs> okay. Do you think anything is actually going to happen to her? Uh, maybe not. Uh, probably not. But at least, like, there's a step forward to, like, okay, she got arrested and she's not still just living her life and she put somebody else through that because it had the roles been reversed and it would be somebody else attacking a black person they could flip it so exactly. easily exactly let's let's speak on that if, if it was a non-black mother and daughter right. and a, a black man came out of a hotel room and said or wherever he came from and said oh yeah somebody stole my phone i think it's that those people over there that mom and daughter they took it mm -hmm. she has my phone look at look at her daughter's phone she has my phone uh, if the daughter said, no, this isn't your phone, this is my phone, and the white mom or non-black mom said, yeah, that's a, that's my daughter's phone, there would that would have been like the end of the discussion. It wouldn't have been this thing of like him tackling the uh, girl and trying right. to get the phone and then it's not his. Yeah. And if it, and especially if he had tackled, tackled her or something, like he would go to jail. They don't right. play about that stuff when it comes to black people. So. Yeah. When I was thinking about this whole situation, I was thinking of like Donald Glover's song of like "This Is America," and then like I just <laughs> I just heard that line like "Don't catch you slipping though," and I was like, "Dang, <laughs> it makes so much sense in like today's hey. climate and like what happened." Because I'm just like, man, all it takes is one time, and like like I said in the beginning, somebody could die or somebody could end up going to jail, and then that's a breaking up of a family. And even if you don't, that's just a traumatic experience that you should that you wouldn't have to go right. through. I'm just saying, the black community, like we have, we have a code of rules and ethics that we have to stand by that a lot of other people don't have to. When you come into this world black, it's like they have a fine print, and it's like you gotta follow by the rules. Cause like the one time you step out of the the rules and you don't um, comply with the officer word for word, you don't make sure that they see your hands at all times. You don't make sure that you're covering yourself when you go out in public. Um, then that's the time where it's just like uh, they caught you slipping, and you know. Right. Um, and if you see me <laughs> looking down at my phone, it's not that I'm uninterested or whatever. It's just that I might be writing down notes. I might already have something. I might okay. be looking at an article. Day. Um. Oh, what <laughs> I say is that important that you write down notes? Like, no. Okay. Wait. What did you say? I say. <laughs> No, I said, so what I'm saying is like so important that you might want to write down notes. Hey, it might be some gems in hey, here. Hey, bro. The people need to hear okay, what the cry siblings have to say. That's facts. That's right. Okay. Stop playing. The next topic that we had to talk about. The big embarrassment. Yeah, the Capitol building being breached by domestic terrorists. Um, yeah, that was just a crazy thing to see. I remember I just came home from work. And I looked on the news and I was just like, what is this? And at first, like, I kind of wanted to be defensive of, like, man, that's the Capitol building. Like, they shouldn't do that. And I, at the same time, I realized that, like, why would I put my time and energy Thanks into being you. frustrated over something that, like, didn't really have nothing to do with me? <laughs> well, not nah, like, to be honest, it was entertaining to me. Because <laughs> I just wanted, because at first, like, you could you could see and you could tell that, like, the police and, 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 the uh, National Guard, whoever was was supposed to be there, wasn't ready um, for what what ensued and what went down. So like the security guards, everything, they were basically getting bullied by the people who were coming in. No, but can I tell you something? Yeah. I saw this video. I'm gonna have Josh insert the video so y'all can see. Okay, I, I saw this video of the police like police escorting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In. It also oh, goes with this go. tweet that Josh is also gonna show y'all. It said, uh. Uh, why are y'all asking where the police are at during all this? Do you ask uh, where Miley's at when Hannah's on stage? And I was like, I know, whoa. We're like, whoa, hold up now. That was deep. Right. When I saw that video, I was disappointed, but I was not surprised. And like, not only that, like, they was up in there chilling. Like, right. they were up in there, you know, at Nancy Pelosi's desk. This man got his boots up, everything. Right. Insert the picture. Man, okay, I got you. Literally, his boots were up and everything. Like, he stole a piece of mail. And then you see them in, like, the chamber and stuff like that. I'm right. like... But the correlation <laughs> that I really wanted to make, though, was, like, okay, the police and the National Guard at the Capitol, and then compare it to, like, when we had our things going on. And I'm definitely going to show, like, the videos of, like, what happened yeah. um, and everything so, that we took when we... 
went to the protest. Yeah. Uh, so Josh and I, like, when everything happened with George Floyd, um, of course, you know, we were saddened by it and, you know, we were just kind of fed up. So we went to a lot of the protests that happened after the murder of George Floyd and, um, yeah, after the murder of George Floyd. Josh and I were, um, got like really involved with the protests. We started getting involved in the protests and stuff. So when we're talking about like police presence and stuff like that, we're saying it from our perspective, from what we've seen in our own city, not about what's happening anywhere else. Yeah, there'll though, be clips of it. Even though it's pretty similar. Yeah. But anyways, um, so when we were there, they were bringing in like um, city buses full of uh, SWAT team members, police from like every surrounding. Uh, City's police. There were helicopters flying helicopters. around. They had snipers on top yes. of the buildings. He's gonna insert the videos. There are yeah. snipers on top of the roof. Like it was a lot. Like people wouldn't even be doing anything. Like we would literally be standing there with our signs chanting and stuff, and they'd be like, "Move back, move!" And like yeah, just, yeah. Stuff. They have they had their batons and like just like forcibly moving people. So back. it's crazy. And there was like so there was an aggressive police presence. Is basically like what we're trying to get across. And so um, that's why it was kind of like, at, at first sight, kind of like mind blowing to see that, like what was going on in Washington and nobody really like trying to stop them. Right. And you know, you know, during Black Lives Matter and stuff, we saw a lot of people like being arrested um, and things like that. But it, this could also be the media coverage too, but you didn't really see like, um, you know, a lot of arrests being made or, expect. but can I be honest, yeah. like, when I saw the first picture on my Twitter feed of like people like climbing the building, mm -hmm. I laughed because I was like, oh, this is obviously a joke. Oh, no, like, it was, it no, was no, definitely no. comedy. <laughs> Listen, no, but this is before I knew it was a real thing. Okay. I'm like looking on my phone and I'm just like, hmm, that's weird. I just kind of like laughed. And I'm going down, I was like, oh, this is real life. That was not a meme. Like, wow. nobody photoshopped that. Like, this yeah. is real. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And I was upset for a little bit until I came home and you reminded me, you're like, Jazz, this ain't got nothing to do with this. Right. I was like, you're right. It was so crazy because a lot of the people that went there wanted to say, like, oh, they're patriots. They're willing to die for their country and everything. I'm like, what does destroying one of your, your country's buildings do for you? Honestly, like, I know you're trying to get a message across that... <laughs> Some type of message across. Yeah. I, I I don't know it by heart. They I, couldn't, to... I couldn't tell you what it was, Listen. but um. They thought they were about. <laughs> Josh let me do it. Oh my bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> she was. <laughs> Somebody said, "Well, what were you gonna do when you got inside?" She's like, "I don't know. This is the revolution." <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Uh, oh my god, that was so funny. She's like, "There's tear gas in my eye." Before we move on from that subject though, I want to give out an honorable mention from the protests that we participated in. Yeah, so what we ended up doing was everybody at the park um, for the protest ended up kneeling in solidarity for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, the exact time that the police officer kept his knee on his neck until he died. Um, and the honorable mention is there was this one dude who had a fresh pair of J's on. First of all, we were marching in grass, all types of stuff. So like, first of all, you know his dedication to the cause was great because he had them brand new ones on. And then when we took a knee, this dude did not crease his shoes once in that eight minutes and 46 seconds. Now I had on some like uh, Roches or uh, uh, some Hirachis or something like that. And boy, I'm gonna put a picture, but my, my junks was bent because my knees was hurting. It was bad. Like, I did not care. But this dude was solid the whole time. was shaking. Right. But that dude was solid the whole time. And, like, it may be silly. It may, it may come off silly, but I'm, like, so dead serious. Like, he did not crease his shoes not once. Like, that was, like, a black salute. I don't even know. But that was, that was respect. Respect to him. Also, another thing that I want to say about the protest was that I got the chance to like lead people in chants and kind of like lead them up the hill before we ended up kneeling down. And like that was like one of the most influential moments of my life, just getting the chance to like lead people and not just lead people in just like something random, but lead people in a cause that I felt um, was something that was important and some, something that needed to happen. And like the way that I got into that position was that like I saw that like the person who was leading the chant like there's like two of them and one of them like started losing their voice and I'm like I'm a loud dude like I don't know I gotta try 
<laughs> I was just like, I gotta, I gotta do something. So like, I just got up and then I knew what chance he was doing. So I just started going back and forth. Uh, we were on the sidewalk and we were just going around um, doing the chance so like the people in the cars going by could just see us in solidarity. And um, I just decided to take over for him. He was real thankful for that. And then like, I remember, I think he just stopped me like a little bit after that. And he was just like, um, I think either he said, thank you for using your voice. Or like, he's like, you got a good voice, you should use it more or something like that. But like, I don't know, it just, it, it hit different. I was just like, wow, this is like, I was, I knew in that moment that I was in my, I was in my purpose, you know? So that was one of those moments where it's just like, I was around the right people. Uh, at the right time, and I feel like I did the right thing, you know. So that was a blessing for me. And then even seeing you, you came in and you were helping people sign up, uh, get registered to vote, and everything like that. So like I don't know, it just showed me that we were really dedicated to the betterment of humanity in general. Always, yeah, always. And I just want to say to you that I'm I'm proud of you that you know that you are affected by these things and that um, that you made the decision that you want your opinion to be heard and that you want to use your voice and everything like that i'm just very proud of you and i thank you for coming <laughs> on to the show you know what i mean Aww. doing your thing i appreciate it um <laughs> but yeah um thank you for watching if you got this far go ahead and subscribe if you already aren't make sure you hit that bell so you know when the new post comes up and leave a like if you like the video and with that peace